In this video, we're going to discuss depreciation. Now remember, there are several different types of depreciation. There's depreciation for the cost depreciation approach to appraising, and there's also tax depreciation. For this section, we're gonna focus on tax depreciation. Tax depreciation is taken on what we call a straight line basis, meaning the property, is, is, property value is divided over a certain number of years to calculate the depreciation for each of those years. For residential property, that time frame is 27 and a half years. And for non-residential or commercial industrial property, that straight line time frame would be 39 years. Let's take a look at a question. This question says a 100 unit apartment building sold for 3 million. Closing costs are $26,300 and the land represents 30% of the value. Question is how much depreciation can be taken each year for income tax purposes. Now the reason why I highlighted each year is because some questions you get may ask you to calculate the depreciation over a certain number of years. This question is a little different. It asks you each year. So let's take a look. One more concept that I just want to touch on is don't forget that the land cannot be depreciated. So the only thing we're depreciating here is the building and the expenses incurred in purchasing that building. How do we do this? Well, the purchase price was $3 million and the closing costs given to you in the question were $26,300. So the total acquisition cost of this building was $3,026,300. We're multiplying by 70%. The reason why is because, don't forget, the land represented 30% of the value. You cannot depreciate the land or the 30%, which means you can depreciate everything else, which represents 70% or the building percentage. So if we take the 3,026,300 times 70%, the depreciation is, the depreciable basis here is $2,118,410. This is residential property, so we're gonna take that and divide it by 27 and a half years, and the amount of depreciation that can be taken each year is $77,033.09. Now let's take this a little step further. It says if the IRS annual depreciation allowance for a small shopping plaza containing 12 stores is 25,000 and the land represents 20% of the purchase price, the purchase price was. So what we're doing with this is working it backwards, knowing how much depreciation there was in order to figure out what the purchase price was. So 25,000, you know that this is a small shopping plaza so the number of years over which you can depreciate this is 39. So if we're depreciating 25,000 per year times 39 years, that would tell us that the depreciable basis on this property was 975,000. But we know that wasn't the total purchase price because the land represented 20% of the purchase price. So this 975,000 will be the building only, which represented 80% of the purchase price. Going one step further, if the total purchase price here is what your if is, if your total purchase price times 80% equals 975, then how do we answer this? We take the 975, put it on top, and divide. So 975 divided by 0.8 or 80% tells us that the purchase price of this property was $1,218,750. Again, this is an example of an application-oriented question where they will take different concepts and put them together. In this case, you need to know that it was 39 years because it was a shopping plaza, and you need to understand how to do the if-then formula to work this backwards to find out what that purchase price was.